Hello, this is Matt Leonard for the Foundry, and in this video we're going to be looking at the new Match Grade tool in Nuke 8. So here in Nuke you can see that we have four clips. The first two are of Gloucester Cathedral, where Harry Potter was filmed for some of the scenes. So if we just home in the viewer, you can see we've got one shot here which is graded, and the same shot which is ungraded. And then we have a couple of shots from Puzzlewood, and this is where some of Jack the Giant Slayer was filmed. So we have one shot again which is graded and an entirely different shot which is ungraded. So let's begin by working on these Gloucester Cathedral shots. First thing we'll do is we'll add a match grade. So we'll just tab and type match grade. And you can also get to that obviously by going into the color and down to match grade here. Now you can see that we have two inputs, target and source. And in my mind, it seems that source would be where you're getting the information from, and target would be what you want to apply it to. But that isn't quite the case. So you can see from this graphic that it's in fact the other way around. The target is the graded clip, and you use the grade from this clip to apply to your other clip. The source, however, is the ungraded clip, and you apply a grade to this ungraded clip. So the target is the graded clip and the source is the ungraded clip. So back in Nuke we want to set the source to the ungraded and the target to the graded. And then we can view that and we'll see what we get. But you can see immediately we get an error. Well, it's not really an error, it's more telling us what we need to do. Which is the fact that we need to basically select some reference frames and then analyze the reference frames. So First off, we have these two options at the very top, and we need to look at these before we can do that. We have task, which is match grade source, or match different source, and we have analyze, analyze the reference frames, or auto analyze per frame. Well, what do these do? Well, the first option, the tasks, the match grade source and match different clips, these define what you want the match grade to actually do. The match grade source matches the source clip with the graded version of the same clip. So you basically use this option if you have two clips that are exactly the same, however one has been graded in say a DI suite or something like that, and you're trying to get your clip in Nuke to match that. Now you must be aware that the match grade requires pixel to pixel correspondence. The source and the target must be aligned in both time and space. They need to be exactly the same or it's not gonna work properly. The match different clip is much easier to understand because what it does is actually in the name. This matches the source clip with a graded version of an entirely different clip. And we'll look at that as a second part of this video. Now the next option down, if you remember, was the analyze. And we have two options here, analyze reference frames or auto analyze per frame. When we use the Analyze Reference Frames, basically it calculates a single global grade from the target frame that covers the characteristics of the color in the sequence and applies that grade to every frame in the source sequence. So it basically, as you set keyframes, it matches those and therefore the color from the target to the source. The Auto Analyze per frame basically does that job for you on a frame by frame basis. So the auto analyze can often be easier and more automated if you want. But if you want more control, then you potentially want to use the reference frames and set those yourself. So let's return to Nuke and set those up. So the first thing we want to set is the task, and match graded source is what we need for this example. The analyze, we're going to keep first of all on analyze the reference frames. So we need to now come down to where it says the reference frame and source and set some keyframes. I'm going to come in and set a keyframe at frame 1. I'm also going to set a keyframe right at the end at frame 50 or 51 and then one in the middle as well. Now you can choose to set different reference frames depending on your footage but I always go with this to begin with to see what we get. So from here we come straight down to analyze the reference frames. It only takes a few seconds to run through as you can see and then what we get is a lovely match grade. So as you can see, based on the text that we have, this is the ungraded footage you're looking at. But if I come across and put viewer input number two on the original target material, which is obviously the graded material, and jump back and forth, you can see that they're pretty much identical. So it's done a really nice job. And if we were just to play through that, 
you can see all the way through we're getting a really nice grade from our target into our source. Okay, so that's using the analyze reference frames with the match grade source. Now if we wanted to, we could come across and use the auto analyze per frame. So let's see how that works. So I'm just going to move this over here and I'm going to make a new match grade. We'll drop that one just a little bit underneath, maybe here. Source and target. Let's just drop in a few dot nodes just to get this nice and organized. So somewhere like here will be fine. Put our viewer back on our new match grade. And again, this time we're going to set the analyze to auto analyze per frame. You can see a lot of the options that we had then go away and immediately we get the grade done for us. So again, if I begin to play through that, you can see it's done a really nice job of grading this original ungraded piece of footage that we have. Okay, so we won't let it go too far, but you can see just from these few frames, we're getting a really nice result. Next up, we have our sequence from Puzzlewood, where they filmed some of Jack the Giant Slayer. So you can see this shot is our graded footage. And we also have another shot just around the corner, which is ungraded, but an entirely different shot. So for this, we can use our match different clip. So again, let's add a match grade. Target goes across, obviously, to the grade and source goes across to the ungraded. Put my viewer on here, add a dot node just to keep it neat and tidy. And we're gonna change now our task to match different clip. Now you can see the next thing we need to do is set some reference frames on the source and the target. So these are really areas where you want the match grade to focus and pay attention to. So let's have a look at this shot. If we play through it, you can see that we've got 99 frames and really it's a locked off shot. So I'm just going to go ahead and set some keyframes just in some specific places at frame 0, right at the end at the last frame at 99, and then one in the middle just for good measure. If we come across to this shot, you'll see it's reasonably similar. So I'm going to again just set a keyframe at frame 0, one at the end, and again one somewhere in the middle. I'll pick 50 for this one. So let's now view the match grade and come across and click on the Analyze Reference Frame again. It takes a few seconds to calculate. And then you can see what we get back is our footage. So if we switch back and forth between the two, you can see it's done an incredibly good job of taking this grade and matching it to this footage. And again, if I was to move through the frames, you can see that it's just done a great job all the way through, even where things change quite significantly. So that's how you use the match grade node. Now there's obviously a number of things in here that we haven't talked about, so let's go over those quickly. Now firstly, we have the ability up here to look at the different outputs. So I can look at the original source, the target, or the matched. And the match is what it's set to by default. You can also obviously do your normal masking if you need to. Now further down under the Analyze section, we have a number of things that we can tweak if we need to. Firstly, the Transform. In here we have 3D LUT or CDL. If we use the 3D LUT, which is set to by default, this basically calculates the grade as a 3D lookup table. This allows you to export the grade as a CSP format, which you can use in the OpenColorIO File Transform node. And we'll look at that in a moment. If you have a jump across to the CDL, and while we've done it, we let's just do a recalculate again. This basically calculates the grade based as a color decision list, and this allows you to export again the grade as an open color IO CDL transform node. Okay, so you can see what that looks like when we run it through the CDL system. Once you've done that, you obviously get a whole bunch of additional things that you can tweak and look at based on that CDL output. For the time being, I'm going to return it to a 3D LUT and again just analyze the reference frames just to make sure that's gone through. Next up, we have this pre LUT, and with this comes in three flavors auto detect, or linear, or logarithmic. Now, obviously, the difference are reasonably straightforward. The linear option uses a linear pre LUT, and the logarithmic obviously uses a logarithmic pre LUT. And this specifically is for a 1D shaper LUT to use for the analyzing process. Auto detect basically works out what it thinks is the best LUT to use. 
Next up we have this LUT resolution and this basically enables you to set the resolution of the LUT in which the match grade stores the color transform information. A value of 16 would speed up the process and a value of 64 or higher can improve the overall result but basically increases the processor time. So if I set it to 64 and we run the analyze frame again you can see the results are very slightly different but you can see it's considerably taking longer now to run through. So you could choose to run it through a higher resolution or even lower if you thought that would be adequate. So at 16 you can see again once it runs through, which is considerably quicker now, that we get a very slightly different result. I'm going to return it again to the default which is 32. Then we have the color space section and this enables you to work with RGB, YUV or LAB and this obviously just adjusts the color space that we're using to do our analyzing. After that we have iterations and the iterations basically are the number of refined passes. Higher values produce a better result but can take longer to process. Again unless you're having problems I would really leave it at 6. Again I'm just going to hit analyze reference frames just to run this through. Now if I want to output a LUT I can come in and I can choose to save that. So I'm just going to drop it into a LUT folder and I'm going to call this uh, match grade LUT and we remember it's a CDL file so I'm going to add that as the end of the file name. Once I write that out you'll see that we now have a new option create open color IO file transform. So I'm going to do that and that then adds an open color transform node directly into my node graph and you can see it connects it into my text node. So now if I look between my open color transform node and my original match grade node you can see they're pretty much identical if not exactly the same. So really this is everything that you need to be aware of with the match grade node. It's extremely fast, extremely powerful and does a fantastic job of matching either the same clip to the same clip where one has been graded previously or matching two entirely different clips as we've just seen in this last example. So this has been Matt Leonard for The Foundry.